Joining us now from Oklahoma City is Republican Governor Kevin Stitt. Governor, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Hey, thanks, Shannon. Thanks for having me on. All right, with the appearance from this leaked draft opinion, if it remains and becomes the majority opinion, that Roe may be going down. You've signed a trigger law that would make it a felony to perform an abortion punishable by up to 10 years in jail and up to $100,000 in fines. Dr. Maya Bass, who performs abortions there in Oklahoma, says this. These laws are being created by people who have no medical expertise. They're not being created with patient safety or medical outcomes in mind. They're created entirely to control bodies. Your response? Well, my response is uh, I represent 4 million Oklahomans. I don't know how much clearer we can be. Uh, we believe life begins at conception and we're going to protect life in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, there were 5,000, just in Oklahoma alone, 5,000 unborn children that were uh, killed last year. And we don't believe that in Oklahoma. Uh, other states can do things differently, but uh, we're going to stand for life in the state of Oklahoma. Okay, a group called The Frontier, uh, a journalistic group, has looked into what they say, some fact checks on what you're saying about how people in Oklahoma feel about abortion. They cite a Pew Research study. They say the most recent numbers they have are from 2014, found that 51% of Oklahoman respondents believed abortion should be legal in all or most cases. So within the last few years, they say your state was pretty evenly split, actually, on this issue. Well, so some of those, uh, you're... Uh uh, some of those different facts or those newspapers that you're quoting uh, uh, are not what we find uh, with the people in Oklahoma. These bills, uh, the representatives are elected from all over the state of Oklahoma, probably 80, 90 percent passage in our state. Uh, so I totally disagree with those numbers. Okay, so let's talk about another law that you signed, much like in what your neighboring state, Texas, has done, allows for private causes of action for anyone who attempts, completes, or facilitates an abortion. This can be including someone who pays for one after a heartbeat is detected, roughly six weeks. We've got brand new Fox News polling on this and how people feel about at that six-week mark. About 50% say they think at six weeks abortion should remain legal. Now, your law, as I understand it, has no exceptions for rape or incest, and the argument is a victim may not know at six weeks that she is pregnant. So what do you say to a woman who finds herself in that situation, lives in your state, and, and feels like she's got no options? Well, first off, super compassionate about that. I have daughters, cannot even imagine uh, what that would be like and that hardship. Uh, but you have to choose that is a human being inside the womb and we're going to we're going to do everything we can to protect life and love both the mother and the child and we don't think that killing one to protect another is the right thing to do either and our heart is super compassionate about that we want the churches we want all the services the state the the nonprofits to come around with adoption services uh and it, it, that is that's super, super hard, and, uh, and we're going to do everything we can to help them, but aborting that child we don't think is the right thing to do. Okay, so let's talk some, through some of those issues, because you know it's one of the main critiques of the pro-life uh, position. So in Oklahoma, to look at the stats of what a woman is facing there with a child, 21.3% of children live below the poverty line. 71% of SNAP participants are in families with children, and Oklahoma ranked 42nd overall in child well-being. A Washington Post opinion headline puts it this way, the GOP roars about abortion, then they abandon the children. So. What is the plan uh, in Oklahoma to help women if you're advising them to carry through on these pregnancies um, when they are up against some real challenges? Well, I mean, he here's the deal. <laughs> is the answer to the uh, socialist Democrat left uh, to abort uh, poor kids? I mean, that's just ridiculous to even kind of quote those type of stats. Uh, we have a free market in Oklahoma. We believe that God has a special plan for every single life and every single child. And we want everybody to have the same opportunities in Oklahoma. And aborting a child is not the right answer. I want to ask you how this may tie in with a recent Supreme Court decision. The McGirt decision from 2020 says basically crimes that are committed that take place on a reservation, um, they will be, by Native Americans, they're going to face prosecution in a tribal or federal court. It is not going to be something that the state can prosecute. So now there are questions about do you think there would be doctors who would say, well, we can get around these state laws. We can perform abortions on reservations. People can come to us if that's the care that they want to seek. 
Well, that's something that uh, a lot of Oklahomans, we've heard the rumblings as well. You know, the tribes in Oklahoma are super liberal. Uh, they go to Washington, D.C. They uh, talk to uh, President Biden at the White House. They kind of adopt those strategies. Uh, so, yeah, we think that there's a possibility that some tribes may try to set up a abortion on demand. They think that uh, you could be one one thousandth tribal member and and not have to follow the state law. And so that's something that we're watching. Uh, but I'll tell you this, uh, Oklahomans will not take will not think very uh, well of that if, if the tribal tribes try to shut up uh, abortion clinics, abortion on demand in eastern Oklahoma, because the expansion of, uh, of tribal lands it includes the city of Tulsa now, which is a million person MSA. I want to talk further about this issue of the tribal lands, the separation there. Nearly half of all of Oklahoma land, at least big swaths of it, are part of a reservation. You vetoed a bill that would require the state to recognize tribal convictions in the same way it acts upon convictions from, say, state municipal courts. It had 96 uh, percent support from your legislature. The Intertribal Council of the Five Civilized Tribes said this. It's unfortunate the governor vetoed the public safety bill. We welcome opportunities to collaborate and work together. Our governor continues to be uncooperative and unwilling. So I want to give you a chance to explain why you vetoed that and what's going on there. Yeah, first off, that wasn't a bill that I requested. That wasn't a bill that Department of Public Safety requested. <clears throat> that was a tribal um, bill that they were trying to get across the finish line, and it didn't reciprocate. They were wanting the state of Oklahoma to accept all tribal convictions, whether they had jurisdiction or not. Uh, but it wasn't reciprocated. They weren't willing to take on the, uh, the state side as well. And so we're not going to expand tribal jurisdiction in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we want to have an honest conversation. And really, the question should be asked, why are, were the tribes fighting the state of Oklahoma to protect native victims in the U.S. Supreme Court Castor Huerta? We just got before arguing before the Supreme Court. The tribes fought the state from trying to protect and prosecute a bad guy that wasn't even native to protect the, uh, the native victim. So again, we're for law and order in eastern Oklahoma. They're trying to confuse the situation. Oklahomans want to protect and we want to be able to prosecute the crimes in eastern Oklahoma. And right now they're telling us we don't have that right. Governor Stitt, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Shannon.